As many of you know, we have a new puppy in the house, and that got me thinking about pets. Everyone knows that Queen Elizabeth loves her corgis, but did you know that reportedly each one of those corgis has its own butler complete with chef and grooming staff? Queen Victoria was also very fond of animals, and it is because of her that the R was added to the SPCA in England in 1840. She had a beloved Pekingese dog named Ludi that was plucked from the Chinese Imperial Court in 1860 when it was stormed by French and British troops. She also had a beloved dog named Dash that was a great companion to her in her early years. But there are a lot of other rich and famous who had pets who bordered on the quite unusual. Those are the ones we're going to talk about today. Pope Leo X. Pope Leo was a member of the powerful Medici family and was the last non-priest to be crowned Pope. As a gift on his coronation, he was reportedly given a white elephant named Hanno from King Manuel of Portugal, who most likely got it from his time as a viceroy in India. Hanno was sent from Lisbon to Rome in 1514 along with his two trainers, much to the delight of the locals who were awed and impressed by this intelligent and well-trained giant. Hanno was kept at the villa of a powerful cardinal, and he quickly became the favored pet of the Pope. He attended all the most important ceremonies in Rome, but unfortunately Hanno didn't adapt well to his new home, and three years after his arrival became ill. The Pope spared no expense and dispatched his finest doctors to try to treat the elephant, but their cure for him that contained gold was worse than the illness, and it killed the poor elephant. After his burial in the Cortel de Belvedere, the Pope had the great painter Raphael paint a commemorative fresco of Hanno. Josephine Bonaparte The first wife of Napoleon was famous for keeping numerous exotic pets. She hired French explorer Nicolas Baudin to procure animals for her collections, and he sent kangaroos, emus, and Australian black swans to Josephine. But she reportedly had a favorite, and that was her female orangutan, that she even allowed to join her at the dinner table for meals, where turnips were the orangutan's favorite treat. Josephine dressed the ape in a beautiful white cotton chemise, and it seems she was quite well behaved in front of guests. Josephine was also very fond of dogs and had a pug named Fortune that was with her at all times, even in bed. Reportedly, she told Napoleon that if Fortune didn't sleep in Napoleon's bed, then neither would she. Later, Fortune was used by Josephine to send secret messages to her family while she was kept prisoner at Les Carnets. The Pet Alligator of the Marquis de Lafayette and President John Quincy Adams It is often told that President John Quincy Adams kept an alligator as a pet in the White House. And while this is somewhat true, the real story is that the gator belonged to the Marquis de Lafayette, who received it as a gift while touring the U.S. in 1825. When Lafayette visited the White House, he had the pet gator with him. President Adams gave the reptile a bathtub in the East Room as a temporary home and reportedly found it extremely amusing to surprise unsuspecting guests to the White House with the gator. But when Lafayette left, he took his pet gator with him. But this wasn't the only time the White House would be home to a gator. Herbert Hoover's son, Allen, had two pet gators that were allowed to roam free on the White House grounds. Emperor Nero not known for his affection of anything, when Nero first saw his pet tigress, Phoebe, fighting in the Colosseum, he was impressed by her ferocity. It was said that she caused more havoc than three other tigers combined, and that she was probably the only thing Nero ever loved. He took her as a personal companion and had a golden cage built for her on his palace grounds. But she wasn't locked up most of the time. Nero had her at the table for dinner even with guests there, and if a guest irritated or annoyed the emperor in any way, Phoebe had dessert for the night. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart Widely considered to be one of the greatest composers of all time, it should be no surprise that Mozart would be attracted to musical animals. He purchased a starling from a bird store that he kept as a pet for three years. He affectionately called the little bird a little fool, but admired its ability to mimic sounds, including his own melodies. It is said that Mozart took inspiration from his pet bird's songs for some of his concertos, but there is no real evidence to corroborate that story. What we do know is that with, when the pet starling died, Mozart was devastated, as if a family member had passed away. 
He organized a funeral and even composed an epitaph for the little bird. The epitaph said, Here lies a little fool, whom I held dear, a starling in the prime of his brief time, whose doom it was to drain death's bitter pain. Thinking of this, my heart is riven apart. President Andrew Jackson Parrots are not really that unusual as pets, even by today's standards. Many people keep birds as companions. Old Hickory, as Jackson was known, bought Pole, the African gray parrot, for his wife Rachel. In his earlier years, when he was a war hero, it seems he had a great affinity for swear words that rubbed off on Pole. Later in his life, Jackson supposedly turned a new leaf. But at Jackson's funeral in Tennessee in 1845, thousands of people gathered to pay final tribute. Apparently overwhelmed by the number of people, the parrot began to blurt out such a string of curse words that the people were horrified as Reverend Normant, who was officiating the service, had the bird hastily carried away. He later said the bird was a wicked parrot that got excited and commenced swearing so long and so loud as to disturb all the people. What, what the parrot said no one seems brave enough to recount, but whatever it was, it certainly was a story for the history books. Ranger and I hope that you have enjoyed these short stories about pets of historical figures. Join us next time for another great history tale on History Happens. Music